Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Michelle Pepin from Syscom. How are you today? Very good. Thank you for having me on. I hope you're doing well yourself, Chrissy. Well, I am, and I'm delighted to start this interview by discussing your Q3 results. You've done it again. Your team has done it again. In spite of how the market conditions, Syscom continues to outperform the market. How about you hit us with some of the highlights? Uh, great question. Thank you. Uh, in the current economic uh, environment that, that we're in, where a number of retailers, which is the majority of our uh, clientele, uh, are facing he strong headwind, uh, we're we're faring very well. And the reason we're faring well is we are we have a seat at the table. Uh, what I mean uh, by having a seat at the table is that we are part of their strategy. We are part of the dialogue and we are consulted. We are on a number of items. We are near and dear to uh, all of our clients in the sense that we are creating additional revenue for them uh, in, in a strong co collaboration with each of one. And the fact that our employees are engaged, committed, and th that they're staying. So uh, our clients are seeing uh, stability in our operations, and of course, you're seeing the results. So great testimony to uh, the hard work that everybody is doing uh, that is being led by Dave Matthews and Sherry Rogers. I, I actually think your stability point is an excellent one that I rarely hear when talking to any of the CEOs. But let's go ahead and hit, hit our audience with some of the positive numbers. Syscom reported a revenue increase to $25.9 million in Q3 2024, up $4.4 4 million, or 20.6% from $21.5 million in the same period in the previous years. A year. You also talked about your gross profit. And personally, I think the past positive cash flow was particularly intriguing. Uh, do you agree with me? And would you like to comment on that? Or would you like to pull something else out of the Q3 announcement? Uh, th this is, uh, you're, you're hitting it uh, on, the head, on the head. Uh, our cash flow, $1.4 million of uh, positive cash flow from operations is really key. Um, for all businesses, uh, even uh, small cap issuers like we are, uh, cash is king, obviously. So the ability for us to be cash flow positive uh, is a is phenomenal. We are um, we are not dependent on any capital raise for us to grow our company at this point in time. Any capital raise that we're doing is strictly for acquisitions. Uh, which is our mandate and that we're focusing on as the market has now changed and is receptive to uh, our initiatives. One other question. I noticed your, your branding has evolved to really support the, the revenue growth from your one of your acquisitions, Prospect Media Group, AdTech mm -hmm. and MarTech. Are you going to stay directed in that particular sector? Or are you... I mean, can you add anything about these acquisitions you're seeking other than um, I did hear you, they're profitable and have a proper business model that has already proven it works. So we're, our, our sec broader sector is uh, ICT, so information communication technologies. Uh, but we're taking a specialty into ad uh, slash MarTech, which is a humongous uh, area. Uh, in an area that is evolving. Um, if I mean, the market today is at worldwide is at $580 billion. And the forecast for the next uh, 10 years is to double in size. So massive area of expansion. So that, that, that's why we're focusing in there. So we're looking at different ad agencies that use data, that use smarts, not only do commercials and so forth to, to be pleasing, but rather where there's a science. We're looking at AI businesses, SaaS AI models. We are looking at big data business, so number crunchers um, that are vital to companies uh, when they're doing their stuff. So a number of these brands uh, are not well known to the public, but our clients 
are well known to the public. And of course, for those of you lucky enough to have participated in this morning's investor talk, your M&A plans I found very intriguing. Would you mind sharing that with our audience? Yes, um, we are looking at stable companies. So when I say stable companies, we're not we're not investing into startups. We're investing in companies that have four plus years of uh, history behind them, uh, that and that, that still have growth uh, potential in them. Uh, if the company has matured, uh, or we're perceiving a market that will be uh, downwards, like you're not going to be buying a newspaper today, right? Uh, and we're looking at profitable companies, uh, profitable companies with positive cash flow. So we do not want cash intensive business at this point in time. And you need to be profitable. It's a key element for us um, as we want to build. And if you spend time trying to fix businesses that are not uh, functioning on all cylinders, uh, it's a, it takes too much resources. Furthermore, if the entrepreneur from whom you you bought the business has not been able to run that business profitably, very difficult for us to come in and say, hey, we know how to do it and we're going to fix things. It just doesn't happen. So a profit mentality for a company, uh, the targets that we're looking into uh, is key. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. And for everybody out there interested in more information, please go to SiscomCorp.com. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Tracy. Have a great day.